What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. So I picked up another uh, chainsaw clone off of Amazon. This seems like I just can't get enough of these things. And uh, this time I picked up a Neotech. NH872 by Neotech and this is a uh, clone of the Husqvarna 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 372 XP chainsaw so pretty neat this will be uh, the second Husqvarna clone I have in my collection um, I don't own I don't currently own any real Husqvarna chainsaws so So I thought what we would do is unbox this thing. I'll show you what comes in the box. I'll show you how it comes, you know, the condition. And then uh, we'll do some assembly and fuel it up and fire it for the first time. This is more for the beginners, guys that don't, uh, probably aren't in the saw world. Or, or this is their first chainsaw. Homeowners, guys like that. Pros, this is, you're not going to get much from this video unless you're just looking for sweet toy to play with and you know a nice little backup saw so first off i just want to say that the packaging on this thing was incredible this box was inside of another box in super sturdy packaging also it is important to know i bought a combo the saw with the bar and chain and they did come in two separate packages with two separate chip uh tracking numbers so if you're if you buy the combo and one package shows up before the other, don't panic. Give it a day or two and the other package should show up. Mine both showed up at the same time, but I have seen guys complain that they ordered a bar with their chainsaw and the bar didn't show up with the chainsaw. Typically it shows up in the next day. So I opened up the box and right on top it had this uh letter to the customer. Uh and it's basically thanking us for buying the chainsaw. And then it kind of goes into how the two-stroke engine is complicated and sometimes may fail to start. And that they have found 90% of the starting issues are caused by environmental factors. Which, it makes sense. Um, these All these saws need tune to your area. Uh, elevation and climate make a big difference on how a two-stroke engine will run. So... If you get this saw and it doesn't start right out of the box, um, they do give you a phone number here uh, for someone in the United States to help walk you through getting this saw started. It should start, most of them do, but if you run into one that doesn't, they're here to help. And that's kind of nice to see that they're, they're putting that out there. Every one of these clone chainsaws I've ever gotten, I've had to tune the carburetor. And uh, other than that, I've never had an issue. A little side note about tuning the carburetor on a two-stroke engine. It's not super difficult. You could watch enough videos on YouTube to learn how to do it. The average person. If you're uncomfortable with it, you could really just take this saw to any small engine repair shop. I don't care what they sell or who they're affiliated with. They will be more than happy to tune this saw for you, and it wouldn't cost you very much money. $20, $30, I, I can't imagine it'd be more than that. If you go to a, a place and they give you a hard time about it, just leave and go somewhere else. They don't deserve your business anyway. All of the dealers around me would be more than happy to tune this saw if I couldn't do it on my own. Enough of that. So let's look what's in the box. Um, lots of bubble wrap keeping everything nice and safe you do get a nice owner's manual and this to me looks exactly like a Husqvarna owner's manual a bag of parts miscellaneous accessories we'll need those in a minute they do include PPE uh, gloves hearing protection 
and a set of safety squints. Also is your uh, your clutch handle, a handy dandy mixing bottle, which I've never used. I don't really know how these work. Um, a chainsaw scabbard, although it's not long enough to fit the bar, it will cover the tip. And then the saw. The saw's nicely packed in there and some bubble wrap and the box is lined with more bubble wrap. So they do a really good job packing these things. I've never had an issue with any of these these uh, clone chainsaws getting them through the, the mail or shipping. No shipping issues. Alright guys, let's come in for a closer look here. So, everything looks pretty good. Um, the only thing I do notice are the stickers are a little a little chintzy on all of these saws. Uh, not a big deal. I could really care less about the stickers. Uh, one thing Neotech does is pretty neat is they do include a skid plate on the bottom of all their saws, I think now. Uh, but everything seems to be where it should be. There's nothing broken. Just looking at this, this though, this one does have a side chain adjuster, meaning the screws access from the side. Um, I'm not familiar with Husqvarna enough to tell you, but the ones that I'm used to, the chain adjuster is in the front there. So that's that's new to me. But everything looks good. Pull this cover off. Take a look at the air cleaner assembly. Yep. Nice Husqvarna air cleaner assembly. We do have a mm, torch spark plug. So no NGK spark plug. Ready to go. All right, let's get this out of the way and take a look at our accessory bag. This is, this is a pretty neat touch, guys. I mean, you know, you get a nice little bag. Keep all your parts and accessories in. Tools, whatnot. They send you some tools. More than just a scrunch and a screwdriver. There's our dogs. So let's look at what we got. We got a squinch, scrunch, scrunch. Looks like a T-handled Allen. Two T-handled Allens, both different sizes. We've got one set of dogs. I don't know, there might be another set of dogs in there. Then a smaller T-handled Allen. So all three, probably all the sizes we'll need to assemble everything. A uh, little pack of screws here, I'm guessing. We'll need these. This looks like a plug for the decomp button. It's a little advanced for some of you guys that might be watching this, but uh, it's there. A nice uh, screwdriver for adjusting our carburetor. This is a real nice long one with a um, an indexing point, meaning you know if you need to turn a quarter turn, you look at this fin and turn it one quarter pretty nice these tools we won't need now um this is more advanced stuff so you get like there's a chain gauge in here there's a piston holding tool these round things are for the piston rings if you want to replace the head or cylinder or anything like that and then this is this plastic piece is for holding the it's a, called a piston stop so won't be getting into that today but these tools are, are, yeah, tools are included with the uh, with the chainsaw, which is that's pretty neat. Pretty decent dogs they include with these. We could upgrade those if needed, but uh, we're gonna run what came in the box. So let's figure out this. 
pieces here. All right, guys, unfortunately, they don't include assembly instructions with the saw. Uh, so I just kind of went through here and I, I figured it out. It wasn't too difficult to figure out. But in your kit here, you're going to find five screws and a bushing. So this bushing and screw and this little screw are for the clutch handle. So let's, let's put the clutch handle on first. And then we'll address these other screws in a moment. Okay, so on this saw, you're going to have this is uh, the lever going to your. Let's take this off. This is the lever going to your clutch. Let's release that. I think that's released. So. This is going to slide down on top of that lever. And then on the other side, this bushing will go inside the plastic. Oh, come on. Butterfingers today. And that'll slide down in the slot that'll keep you from tightening that bolt too tight and then this just slides down until the hole lines up in the metal lever so what you're gonna want to do on all these screws is put a little blue loctite don't use red use blue any chainsaw bolt you take off, put on, you're gonna to wanna to put a little dab of, little dab, well, come on, a little dab. Oh. <laughs> little dab of blue Loctite. Make sure your threads start nice and easy. You don't want to cross any cross thread anything here. And they included the wrench for all of these screws. That's so nice. I don't have to go look for anything. I'm sure there's a torque spec on this, but I'm going to go with that's good enough. We'll come over to this side. Find our hole. Oh, come on, really? Oh. It's probably a little more Loctite than you would really need. Check the operation. Nice. Okay. All right, the next thing we'll do is while we still have the, while we're still working on the saw, you guys in here somehow it's just under your chain mount here you're gonna see two screw holes what's gonna go there is a set of dogs this is your inside dogs they're gonna go right there and on it is a uh, chain catch so before we put that on there Go ahead and put some blue Loctite on our chain catch so that this doesn't fall out. I'm just going to take the nut off. Put a little 
Loctite on there. Screw our nut back on. Really should get a wrench on there. Since I don't have one handy, we'll just use a pair of Leathermans. There you go, nice and tight. Make sure this still spins. Yep, all good. All right, guys, now we'll put our dog on. All right, last thing we gotta do is put the uh, dog on our cover. And this is pretty simple. There's one little hole in the center there. You know, line the dogs up. Little blue Loctite. I put this on so that the bar studs will help center my outside dog. And that's it, that's it for assembly of the saw. Nothing else needs to be done out of the box. Do you want to clarify something? Don't use Loctite on your bar nuts. All right, we're gonna get some of this stuff out of the way that we no longer need for now. Get this thing barred up. So I did buy mine with a 28 inch Neotech bar. And chain they do make pretty nice bars I gotta say I'm I kind of dig these bars um, of course I love lightweight bars but can't always afford them but it's a pretty good looking bar overall and they seem to hold up well all the ones that I have, I've run I've never had any issues with so this is a 28 inch bar 058 should be 3 8 chain. Again, Neotech chains are pretty decent chains as well. The only thing I've noticed with the chains are is they seem to they stay sharp for a pretty good long time, but once you start sharpening them, they really seem to uh, disappear quick. It's not like they don't they sharpen up uh, pretty easy and it you don't get as much life out of them it seems but uh, pretty inexpensive chains not not a terrible chain to run of course I've never really had any chain that was terrible all right so go ahead and get your your chain un untangled but it's easiest to untangle these chains on a flat surface that's what I have found 
Um, let's get this thing barred up. We are pretty close to getting this thing ready to fire. So I'm just gonna bar this up and uh, put some fuel in it. So. What you want to do is set your bar on the bar nuts, or bar studs. Get your chain here. Start it on the sprocket. It'll fit down in the holes. It's kind of self-explanatory. Grab your chain around the bar. And when you're putting this chain on, you want to make sure that your rakers are facing forward and your tooth is behind the raker. Because you could put this on backwards and it's not going to cut very well. So I think there's a diagram. No, uh, there's not a diagram. Huh, oh well. Rakers in the front. Now I'm just going to go ahead and push this bar forward. Make sure our. Uh, chain is in in the slot in the lower bar and we'll place our cover on now i might have to adjust this On the chain tensioner there's this little nub right here and that little nub has to go in this little hole and that's what moves your bar in and out you want to get that lined up best you can not quite there so I'm gonna set this on There you go. I just turned it until it kind of slid in there. We'll get our bar nut started. Make sure our clutch is off. Test, test your chain. If it spins freely, that means your clutch is off. Get your bar nut started. Now, we can see that our chain is very loose, so we're going to tighten this tensioner up. That's going to stretch our chain. <laughs> All right, guys, slight technical difficulties. If you notice, we do have a different bar on our chainsaw now. Um, somehow, the bar that I got... is a steel mount and is not working. Now, I could modify it to work, um, but I'm not, I'm not going to. I have an Oregon bar that'll work and we'll get this thing, we'll get it put together and get it running and finish off this video. And I'll contact uh, Neotech about the bar in, uh, I'm sure they'll just send me a a proper one. But for now, this I'd like to get this thing rolling. So we'll just use this. This chain I'm putting on here, I don't really know. Uh, it's probably doll. So we're probably not going to do any press cuts today anyway. Just put this together. And uh, now that might be the wrong bar, too. I don't know. Whatever. All right.
All right, so once you have your bar and cane on, you want to go ahead and run it down the bar a few times to make sure it's moving smoothly and uh, uh, it's not too tight. And your, your bar and chain are going to loosen up a little bit after you run it, so you'll have to retighten it. All right, enough messing around with the bar and chain. Let's get this thing fueled up and fired up. Husqvarna's usually start pretty easy. They're pretty simple. So put your kill switch in the on position. All the way this way is off. This is on. Make sure your chain brake is engaged. Pull your choke lever all the way out. Give it a couple pulls. Once you hear it pop, press the choke lever in. All right, guys, that's it. That's all there is to it. Pretty simple task, getting that thing set up and ready to run. Uh, I could tell right away the carburetor does need uh, leaned out quite a bit. It's it's pretty fat. So we'll do that. I'll do that in a later video, maybe. I don't know if that's something I want to share with you guys. And I don't want somebody to mess up their saw because of my techniques. So um, you're better off watching some videos on YouTube of... Uh, some of the small engine guys, uh, I think that one guy's name is Small Engine Steve or something. He has a great video on how to tune a carburetor. Buck and Billy Ray has several videos on how to tune a carburetor. And then uh, West, West Coast Sauls just did a real good one on how to tune a carburetor by ear. So go check out all those those guys if you need to adjust the, the carburetor on your chainsaw. But I just wanted to get this thing... Out of the box, assembled, fueled up, and fired up, and uh, we'll uh, we'll put this thing to work here soon and report back with with how how it works. You know, I I don't know. I don't have high spec expectations for most of these saws. Um, they've all exceeded my expectations. I think when you pay one third the price, not even one third, it's 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 way it's less than that like an eighth of the price of a of a brand new 372 um let's just say it's one third the price when you pay one third the price you should expect uh one third the quality and these things actually i think are pretty good quality and they all seem to be holding up i have several of these like you guys have probably seen on my videos and i still run them all uh, i don't have any issues with any of them so till next time see you guys in the next video